I've owned this Marshall JCM 900 since uh, the early 90s and I still remember what I paid for. It was about $625, uh, quite a bargain compared to today's prices. But as far as I remember, I've only ever changed the tubes in this amp once and that was probably 20 years ago. Uh, and I've also never opened the amp myself uh, to take a look what's inside. Now, what I wanted to do in this video is uh, show you how to change the preamp tubes of an amplifier. I've consulted with a couple of professionals and it's pretty simple to do with some very important considerations. So that's what we're gonna be talking about today. Uh, I'm the Lonely Rocker, this is I Don't Have a Band, and welcome to my home studio. <laughs> As that shocking experience in the opening demonstrated, uh, working inside an amplifier potentially can be very dangerous. Even when you disconnect an amp from a power source, there are components in this amp that actually store electricity, so there'll be live uh, current inside of this amplifier. And uh, if you touch the wrong thing, you could hurt yourself. So I'd highly recommend not going inside your amp if you have no experience whatsoever. Uh, I did consult with a couple of professionals who said that changing a preamp tube is really simple, but still, you need to be very careful if you don't know what you're doing. So please proceed with caution. And if you really have no idea, just uh, leave it to a certified amp technician to take care of the uh, tube swaps for you. Changing preamp tubes. That's my focus for today. Let's get started. While all amps are different, the general principles should apply to most amps. Though practicing caution applies in all cases. The first thing to do is to turn off the amp and disconnect the power. Remember, even though the amp is off, there still could be live voltage inside of the amp. So be careful. With my amp, I had to remove the back grill to access the tubes. Alright, so we've got the amp opened up. Uh, as you can see, the way it's laid out, it's really easy to access the tube. So you really got to make a big mistake if you're going to hurt yourself. Just don't stick your fingers in there. They just don't need to be in there. Uh, it's nice that the tubes are easily accessible here on top. We don't have to pull the chassis out or anything like that, so we're not going to do that. Uh, just a little overview of what you can see in here. You've got your input transformer. you got your three preamp tubes. These are 12 AX7s. Uh, these are the power amp tubes. We've got two uh, EL34Bs, uh, these big uh, groove tubes right here. Uh, I do know those are capacitors and they do store electricity, so we're not going to go anywhere near those, and the output transformer. The advice that I was given was to try replacing the first uh, preamp tube, the one closest to the input jack on the amp. But also the other suggestion was maybe just to change the order. These are connected in serial, which means there's no real effect on the circuitry of the amp, but there possibly could be some uh, tone changes simply by changing the order. So I'm going to do that first and then replace the first one with the brand new tongue saw. I'm just curious to see. I'm not sure we're going to have such dramatic results, but it's good practice in uh, changing our preamp tubes. The preamp tubes in the JCM900 are covered. This is not the case with all amps. To remove the covers, I simply pushed down on the cover and gave it a small twist. To remove the tubes, carefully pull them straight up and only use a slight rocking motion if they are stubborn. You need to be very careful not to break the pins on the tubes. A broken pin inside of a socket will definitely end this simple job in a hurry. By the way, here's a safety tip. If you've never been inside of an amp, only use one hand. Never put two hands inside of the amp at the same time. If you ever come in contact with an electrical current, this could save you from serious injury. I removed all of the tubes because I wanted to experiment with changing their order to see if it had any effect on the tone of the amp. In this case, the differences were negligible, but it was still a good experiment to try. It didn't cost anything and at least showed the state of each tube was consistent. So it's worth a try before replacing any of your tubes. To replace the tubes, simply line up the pins with the sockets and push down until the tube locks into place. The pins have a specific pattern, so make sure they are lined up with a socket and don't try to force it. Ensure you are pushing straight down as you don't want to bend or break the pins on the tubes. While in my case a new tube may not have been necessary, I replaced the tube in position 1 with the new tongue saw. Before closing everything up, I reconnected the power and turned on the amp to ensure all of the tubes were working. Once confirmed, I replaced the tube covers and closed up the amp.
The reason I decided to tackle this project in the first place is uh, my amp has been sounding a little harsh to me lately. I don't know if it's because I'm now recording direct. Perhaps I'm hearing things that I've never heard before. I know some of you will say that a JCM 900 is typically harsher than let's say a JCM 800. I don't know. I've always loved the tone of this amplifier, but felt that it just needed a little tweak. And uh, getting inside this amp for the first time and seeing how easy it was to change the preamp tubes has got me really excited. Now, while I didn't experience any drastic changes by changing one tube, uh, the point was is I got inside and gave it a shot and realized how easy it was. As long as you practice caution and don't touch things that you shouldn't touch, it's actually a simple project to do. I think what I'm going to do is go buy an assortment of different tubes now, try different combinations and see what changes I can actually make to this amp. And to me, I think that's the big difference between a tube amp and using a modeler or a plug-in. You know, if you like to get your hands dirty, you like to experiment and maybe shape your own tone from an amplifier, that's really where all the fun is. And it's just added a level for me now that I can get inside and change those preamp tubes. Uh, by the way, if you're wondering why I didn't touch the power amp tubes, uh, that's a different ball game. Uh, when you change the power amp tubes, you have to bias the amplifier. And that's the process of adjusting current to make sure that the tubes are running optimally. That's not something I want to do or know how to do. So I'm going to leave that to a certified professional. And if you have any concerns going inside this amp, honestly, it's not worth the risk. If you just don't know what you're doing, that's what amp technicians are for. They'd be more than happy uh, to take care of your amp. Well, if you have any questions, any thoughts, any things that you'd like me to try, well, that's what the comment section is for. Uh, if you're new to this channel, I hope I've earned a subscribe. I've got a ton of content on this channel, a lot of it revolving around this home studio gear to the home studio enthusiast and the home recording musician with videos to hopefully help make your home studio life better. So just click that subscribe button and come along for the ride. If you really want to support this channel, I am on Patreon. Links to everything I've discussed and perhaps some things I haven't are in the description below. And above all else, I hope I'll see you again in another video. As always, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments. And please like, subscribe, and ring that bell to stay up to date. Remember, you don't need a band to rock and roll. There are a lot of great musical projects you can do by yourself, right from your own home. I hope to see you again next time.